Welcome ladies and gentlemen to yet another exciting shoe making tutorials on Bomo Bespoke. Today we are talking about ankle boots. Many people love them but many people hate to make them. You would have to crimp them and many times spring them. Today I want to show you how you can avoid one of those. You can avoid crimping if you don't have a crimping board but you can't avoid springing. You think they're wise? So I want to show you this type of ankle boot that you can add side seams to the side and then avoid crimping. We do keep quiet. So this is what we're trying to create. I don't know whether to do this or to, you know, do something like this. It goes, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes. And then that, you yeah. know, all of that. I'm not really sure. I think I'll go with this one. Well, depends on what I feel when we get to that bridge. So this took the last length, 30.5 cm. Center line in the front, this. What's this guy even doing here? Center line at the back. Then, of course, you know that this last length divided by 5 will give you the distance from here to here. Last length divided by 5. Yep. So this is the counterpoint. You add 1 cm to that, you get the back height. This is the widest point on this last. Tangent out to its flat surface and you see the point over there. See that? So, that. so this is the vamp line, the point it intersects with the center line in front, it's called the vamp point. And then if from the vamp point you measure upwards one quarter of the last length, that's what the last length divided by four, the distance you get is the distance you mark in step, right? From here to this right side ball, take the measurement, divide it into two, so this is half that's half divided into two, draw a line from your counterpoint all the way to that middle point. And this line is called a water line. You can see that I have also done taped out the bottom because I need the bottom pattern for my insole. This is a high heel, so I have to pay attention to how I construct my insole. Um, Basically, this will start around about the instep and go somewhere like that, this, 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 this. We'll do all of this on flat paper, but next thing we need to do is to get this guy out and cut. We've cut out our last copies. We're going to double up the last copies and build a mean form from the last copies and then draw a pattern from that mean form. Before I forget, what we're building is a high heel shoe, so we need to calculate the heel pitch, which is how far the heel of the shoe lifts off of the ground if you wedge it with a pencil. In the case of this last, it came to about 8 cm. 8 cm is about 3 inches, I guess. 3 point something inches, I don't know. Whatever. So, that's our mean form. We start designing right now. Place our mean form on the heel pitch mark and draw out the mean form when you do not want to crimp a boot then it will be um, a wise thing to do to add side seams side seams on both sides and you know just by adding that side seam right there will crimp the boot for you will crimp the pattern and you'd find that by the time you stitch it, you'd have no problems at all. I'm not going to sit here and explain blue by blue the theory involved in designing boot patterns. I have extensively, extensively done that in several playlists. There is the off boot behavior, there is uh, the derby boots classes, I think. 
there's a Chelsea boot classes and then there is all boot behavior look at look at those playlists and you know acquaint yourself with what needs to be done what I really want to point out is that when you have a boot to make and you don't want to crimp it you basically add side seams like you see that I have done so you add a side seam on both sides what happens is that when you stitch that together you'd find that the boot takes the um, blocking of the last and this will be the most problematic one so let's figure out how this is going to attach we would have to have stitching allowances here stitching allowances there the most complex part of piece so let's do that the most difficult pattern piece it doesn't need crimping but it sure does need springing so let's see how we spring that you bend it backwards like that use that intersection point as your pivot pivot again until it lies 90 degrees you pivot again you keep going until you get to the joint of the curve so you draw your curve up to the joint of the curve and at the middle point of the joint of the curve, you pivot to the tip of the vamp and drawing the rest of the curve up to 1 cm at the feather line. Now, with your pivot at the tip of the vamp, you draw in the rest of your feather line. And then at that point where the feather line meets the ball, you use that to bring it back to the rest of your feather line. Now, if you align your curve line it will elongate the vamp a little bit more forward and then you have your vamp of course i discussed how to spring boot vamps in i think two videos away there's a detailed video of how to do that so the point i'm making is you can't run away from both of them you are either crimping or you're crimping and springing you can't run away from springing so we did a test shoe to check out the pattern and as you can see this is what it looks like as you can see it sits quite very well in the well of the last without any um crimping uh so that's about it of course you can see that i added a zipper to the side right there Meanwhile, I hope you guys are getting ready for the Leather Technology and Trade Online Summit. It's next week, oh, don't miss it. Make sure you register. Hope to see you there. God bless you.